This week, episode 308 of Stogie Geeks, we have the opportunity to interview Lincoln Salazar, publisher for Cigars and Spirits Magazine. Cigar and Spirits Magazine is an award-winning publication. The magazine is a respected industry leader, and it's the second largest distributed magazine in its category, ranking in the top 20 in the luxury and lifestyle magazine sales. The publication features celebrity interviews, lifestyle, fashion, travel, cuisine coverage. Cigar and Spirits magazine is a top choice for the ultimate lifestyle for connoisseurs who enjoy learning about the history and developing trends in the world of cigars and spirits. And in our second segment, Drew and I talk Sticks of the Week. You can follow along, stogiegeeks.com forward slash 308. Stogie Geeks, episode 308 starts right now. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Hosempa, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. And a Vintage Cigar Club located in Warwick, Rhode Island is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Confidence. Confidence isn't walking into a room with your nose in the air, thinking you're better than anyone else. It's walking into a room and not having to compare yourself to anyone in the first place. Welcome to Stogie Geeks, episode 308. I'm your host, Joe Hosempa. Thank you for joining us. Here we have live via Zoom. I'm so used to saying Skype. Anyway, live via Zoom, we have our co-host, Drew, from Bedford, Texas. Drew, what's going on? Hey, nothing much, Joe. Just out here hanging out. It's getting cooler. Uh, weather's starting to come around down into the 80s, so looking forward to that. <laughs> Other than that, I'm, yeah. I don't Looking forward to get some more golf time in. Yeah, man, it's gonna be forties over the night for us. So you know, I got a sweater. You know, that's it. Just for you know, Stogie Geeks. Drew has an email. D R E W. That's Drew. Drew at StogieGeeks.com. Email all of your complaints to him, and email me at Joe H StogieGeeks.com for all the good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I have the privilege and honor, and so does Drew. <laughs> we have the opportunity to interview Lincoln Salazar, publisher for Cigars and Spirits magazine. We're going to talk cigars. We're going to talk lifestyle. I-, I could probably do like a whole 6,000 episodes on this topic, uh, especially when I first got into cigars, looking at the publication, and now there's more publications. We're going to talk about that market as well, uh, as well and get into the, the business function a little bit um, as uh, time allows. Lincoln, of course my screen goes dark, here we go. Lincoln has been an Orange County executive for more than 10 years, owning businesses in marketing, publishing, cosmetics, and event management. Lincoln was nominated for Entrepreneur of the Year alongside CEO of Vizio and has been the CEO centerfold for the Orange County Metro. He believes that perseverance, loyalty, integrity are important in all aspects in life, especially in business. You, you uh, are Lincoln. Welcome to the show, because you, because when I hear sure. loyalty, integrity, and that, like I treat my customers and I treat everyone equal, and I enjoy. And if you never lie to anyone, you never have to look behind your back. So, Lincoln, welcome to the show. How are you? Thank you so much for having me, Joe. I really appreciate it today very much. Yeah, no, thank you for your time. Uh, the topic, right? Cigars and Spirits Magazine. Um, I got to go right into the business aspect, and then we're going to talk about cigars. What, Absolutely. What's it like to compete in that space? Because um, you have a couple of obstacles when it comes for a business. For example, it's it's a magazine. 
It gets distributed on you know monthly or quarterly. It does have a cadence uh, there. Uh, how has social media impacted that, and what's it like to go against some of the other publications in that arena? You know, it, it's so interesting because you know it's it's funny because when we go to like cigar events or the IPCPR, we go to different cigar conventions or industry things. We we tend to. A lot of times people say, yeah, you're in the cigar business. I mean, we are in the cigar business and we are in the uh, we are in the business of promoting cigars, speaking about cigars, writing about cigars. But traditionally, if we were to categorize us, we, we're actually in the publishing business. Mm. So it's actually really interesting because right now so many people see us as in the cigar business or even when we go to the spirit side of the business, because we don't only have cigars, but cigar and spirits. We have spirits as well. But we also uh, it's we're more in the publishing side of the business. So, and it's interesting because we've been very blessed, knock on wood, as over the last 10, 15 years, most print is starting to go away. You see a lot of the big magazines, you know, the, the magazines are getting smaller. And in fact, when we came out, we were kind of crazy in this instance of uh, when I was talking with other publishers, when we were saying we were doing an oversized coffee table type publication, they thought we were crazy, especially in, in the climate of the publishing world that's been that's been happening. So uh, we, we went oversized and we, you know, and part of that is because the people that are reading Cigar and Spirits magazine are, it's a, you know, a more of an up, there's a certain code, I believe, between people with cigars and spirits, uh, especially with cigars. Um, when we came up with the concept for Cigar and Spirits, we always said, and my biggest thing was I love cigars. I'm passionate about them. I love spirits. I, lo I love sampling and trying different spirits from all over the world. But more importantly, what I love more importantly is the camaraderie that we actually share over a, a cigar and a spirit. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's time that you take for an hour to an hour and a half or two to be able to sit with someone you love or even sit with yourself and be able to really take in meditation time and then kind of think and reflect on life, whether it be with yourself or with someone that you're sharing time with. And, you know, cigars are meant to be shared with people. It's so beautiful in this industry how you see so many people passing different cigars. But we've been very blessed in this climate in the publishing world to actually end up in the top 20% sold of luxury and lifestyle nationwide. Mm. Uh, and that includes such as Rob Report, uh, includes their, uh, Watch Magazine's travel publications that are in luxury as well. And we've been we've been absolutely blessed to be in that top 20% and still thriving. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, but when it comes down to it, we are in publishing and our, our, our job is to give out great content to the consumers as well as to the industry. And, you know, we try and uh, not be so biased if anyone that we do uh, either write about uh, or we, 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 we try to never, even if there's a brand that we've tried that we just say it's not good. We'll, we'll make usually make a phone call to them first and say, you know, we just it's not our palate maybe for the, our panel or for the people of Cigar and Spirits. And a lot of times they'll send us a different blend. And it, it will be a big hit. Um, you know, we're not in the in the business to promote uh, and to bash anyone's cigars because whether it's someone that's a seasoned uh, cigar maker or someone that's new to it, it is a craftsmanship. It is an art. It is an artistry. Uh, you know, this is not cigarettes. This is not some machine made. There's there's um, you know, hundreds of hands that touch a cigar before it comes to the humidor in your lounge. <laughs> in order for uh, a consumer to be able to uh to be able to you know partake in, in this in this artistry so you know we really try and push that the uh to answer your question on digital yes um, it, it's interesting because you know it's, it's been beautiful for us because we get to use our platform for the digital market uh as well we have cigar and spirits and i think we're getting a little over a hundred thousand unique visitors a month now uh, we're doing recipes and we're investing heavily into digital because we do have to change with the times. But the thing about Cigar and Spirits magazine uh, is that people don't um, people don't just buy one Cigar and Spirits magazine. They tend to, number one, subscribe, but even more, they, they collect them. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, it's it's not something they just throw by the can and, you know, pick it up and reading it while they're sitting on the toilet. You know, they, they you'll go into a lot of offices, you'll go into lounges, you'll go into homes and you see this thing on their coffee table. You know, it's something to respect. Uh, our editor, Randy Mastronicola, does an amazing job. And his predecessors before have done a beautiful job piecing together the publication. And our team works very hard at every issue, just like it would for a cigar. And, um, you know, there's a lot of art that goes into it. And there's a lot of creativity. And people collect them. We get people from all over the world, from London, from Dubai, emailing us saying, hey, I, I missed that Bob Dylan issue. Is there any way I can get it? I need it for my collection. So even though we're competing in the digital market, um, and we're investing in the digital market. 
we, we see the big opportunity for digital. Um, the only barriers we're seeing is with these social media, uh, I'd say idiots that are not allowing us to be able to, including the cigar companies, to be able to promote uh, uh, premium tobacco, premium cigars right. through social media, which has been a barrier. But uh, we've seemed to be okay in getting around it. Uh, our following is growing tremendously at uh, Cigar Cigar Spirits Ma- uh, Cigar Spirits Magazine on Instagram, and it's it's growing uh, quite rapidly. We're close to twenty thousand followers now, but we're investing heavily into our social media, our uh, and our our digital as well, but it never, it, with our demographic, it never fits better than just to fill that publication and really collect it. So I, you know, right. You bring up a lot of interesting business points, right? In our day job here, or in my specifically day job attached to story geeks, we do, uh, seven other podcasts in cybersecurity, right? And, um, the good news is that, you know, uh, 74% of business owners, are disappointed with Facebook. I'm just using that platform. That's you can Google that. You can get numerous articles. So 74% there. And I think that you know I'm not talking about the other platforms, but to make the argument, in your case, you really need that balance, right? You either have you have to cater to uh, a different sectors of your target audience. For example, the magazine collector, right? The person who wants to learn more about the lifestyle of either the person on the cover or get or get an interview, right? Social media gives the platform for you to put video into it, bring more listeners and more, and more viewers to attract them to the magazine. But I think from a business functionality, you truly need that that because even though there is big tech and even though a lot of people are going online and we hear it all the time where cigar companies are relying on social media there are 86 in cigar ambassadors or they're 86 in reps in some cases talking about driving it online let's like you really need that balance but i really yeah. truly feel that because of your topics right i'm not going to grab your publication like you said sit on the can read it quick in an airplane and then go i'm going to when i go to a cigar shop and and have a chance to relax thumb through it catch an article carry it in my bag or my computer bag and whatnot take all month to go through it or or take the cadence to go through it i truly believe that that's where some other publications, even outside of your industry, have gone wrong. They say, oh, no, 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 we have to run the digital. Oh, no, 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 we, we have to stay here. The answer is you can do both. You know what I mean? Like f- from a business perspective. It's been a big opportunity for us. I mean, it gives us the opportunity to take in uh, different types of advertisers. You know, and, and we're, we're a little different than some of the people in our, in our, in our category that are in publishing in our category. Um, you know, we, we do like to... We work with obviously the, the some of the um, more seasoned cigar manufacturers that have been around for you know 20, 30, 100 years, whatever it may be. But we do like to work with a lot of some of the boutique brands as mm. well. And digital gives them kind of that opportunity to be on our platform and be seen by pe- the people that they normally wouldn't be seen by. Right. You know, we're, we're really uh, traditionalists when it comes to the craftsmanship, the artistry of cigars, and we want to be able to promote the people that have earned the opportunity to be seen. Uh, without having to, you know, spend, you know, two hundred thousand dollars, whatever. And I'm not speaking about anyone in particular, but sure, I'm just sure. saying, have to do that to break the bank for them to even be seen by anyone. We want to give. Uh, I kind of like to say we're the America, because we we want to have opportunity for everyone in the industry yep. without it getting it without it getting ridiculous. I mean, we do pre-screen some of the, you know, if uh, pre-screen a lot of the people that we do put in the publication. Actually, every person we do, every brand we do put in, in the publication, especially if we're writing about them or anything like that, we do make sure that, you know, it's a company and I, with the owners of the company to make sure there's something they're going to be doing long term because we do get a lot of people that come in the industry for one month and are gone the next. Right. We try and avoid those kind of people coming into the publication until they've earned it. You yep. know, I believe in hard work. I started with nothing but 800 bucks in my pocket in the back of a hair salon with six people sitting back to back with nothing but notepads and, and pens and cell phones to make uh, to make sales calls. Yep. So I really appreciate the entrepreneurs that are working hard to you know that are putting the blood, the sweat, the tears, and understand what it is to actually climb. Yeah, you you actually need to give that give them that opportunity, and you're allowing for them to have the opportunity for sure. We have a methodology here on Security Weekly for that. We have newer security companies that are teams of eight. 
And then there are some enterprise level that are teams of four, five, six, 10, 15, 20,000 employees, right? So we have different programs to fit with, with, with their budget and time constraints. And, all that. and that's what America's built on. I mean, that's yep. what we're all about in this country is being able to promote the, the small businesses to grow, to be bigger businesses and to create, you know, put meals on, you know, put food on the plate for their families, their employees. I mean, that's what we're here for. Mm -hmm. And we want to our spirits we want to be able to do that for for people as well that's we're a voice for the industry and we want to get that voice out for the people that are willing to climb and do the hard work and willing to put in the time and willing to make the relationships and willing to put in the nights and the days and all mm -hmm. that goes you know what i find fascinating and then drew we're, we're, we're going to ask you to ask a question for for lincoln as well you know what i find fascinating i deal with here at stogie geeks with the cigar minutia storm industry whatever you the cigar pot right where yeah. you have companies coming in and out some are great you have classic facings you have the boutiques you have different companies coming in and out one of my sticks of the week this week i just found out that like it was an old company and it merged into another company and it's kind of got the same name and i'm just like whatever right we have that in the cigar industry but you <laughs> you as publisher of the magazine have that i'm sure in the spirits industry, <laughs> right? That part of all that craziness and development and in and outs. And then, and then on top of that, you have the cuisine industry and lifestyle industry where I'm sure what you spoke about in your first magazine, fashion brand or whichever, is not even a fashion anymore. So you have to always kind of like you keep have staring the all the time. Yeah. If, if, if you look at the magazine over the last almost nine, 10 years, uh, about every three years, we, we kind of change the look and style of the publication. We keep the core of what it is, the content, but we change the look, the feel, the fashion. You know, we got to change with the times. We got to stay current all the time. It's interesting because every we're bi-monthly, so every six, you know, every forty-five to sixty days, we're putting together fresh new content. We have mm -hmm. to put together something new every time: new content, new cigars, new spirits, and each industry is its own different animal. The cigar industry. Uh, is much different than the spirit industry. And what's interesting that a lot of people don't understand is if the people in the a lot, the, we get in the cigar industry how spirits go with cigars. We get that from the cigar industry. Yep. Not everyone in the spirits industry, though, understands cigars go with, or spirits go with cigars. Right, right. And because maybe the person that we're speaking with, they, they've never smoked a cigar. Um, or if, and if they don't, they don't understand it. So we, our job is to then educate them. We actually, uh, it was Zacapa, uh, who I think was our number one rum a few years ago, but when we were talking with Zacapa rum, they actually did the IPCPR with us when we had our spirits garden. And I was talking with the team over there and I go, are you guys aware of how many cigar smokers are actually drinking Zacapa rum right. with their cigars and prefer to have them? They had no clue. Sure. We got numbers on them and they were just, they were, they were, you know, they were astonished by it. They couldn't couldn't believe it and that's just because the gentleman that didn't smoke that was in this position didn't smoke cigars but he had two other people in his department that did and they go oh yeah we smoke we, we always smoke we always have rum with our cigars right you know right so it, it's really educating the spirits world as well as how much cigars and how that pairing goes so perfectly together for the cigar smoker and for the spirit and how it can enhance the experience every time yeah yeah and then you have the luxury brands and lifestyle, right? I, uh, and Drew and I were talking about this a couple of episodes back when we were both on travel, when um, like like Nick Jonas was on the cover of Cigar Aficionado and it got a million views or whatever. I got and a story like, for that. Like from, what? I got a story for that. Cool, I'd love to hear it, right? <laughs> um, my take on it originally was like, oh, like I, I even tweeted about it. If you follow me at Joe Hozempa, right? Like I was like, oh God, like can the cigar industry do anything else to just like, like not get in its own way, right? My opinion. Then I started to think about it. I was on vacation. I had some time to think about it. I was talking to Drew and I'm like, Nick Jonas, I associate him with, with boy band. He's solo. He's going on his thing. I'm not a fan of the music. However, I'm really interested in like what the hell he smokes. So like the point is when you interview a celebrity, right? 
I, I want to know, like, what brands are they into? You know what I mean? Like, as yeah. as a stogie geek, you know, uh, I'm not really, like, well, I don't care what, what shirt they're wearing and stuff like that. I really care, like, you know, what are they drinking? What are they smoking? And what are they doing in their spare time? You know what I mean? Because I'm having a great time in my spare time. And, and I'm sure with their money, they're having a hell of a time with, 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 with their spare time. And I love the aspect that, that, th that those articles bring, you know? Yeah, you know, and it's, and it's so great when we do have the celebrities that, you know, are, that, you know, are, are stogie geeks and just love cigars. And, yep. you know, Nick Jonas, uh, we do know because we were working with Nick Jonas for about a year yep. uh, before aficionado. Uh, I don't know. I'm not, I don't want to say before aficionado, but in the same meantime. Sure. But he's a heavy, heavy cigar smoker. Right. I, I don't say heavy, but he's, he's, he does love cigars. Right. And he's a younger generation, and we're trying to target more of a younger generation yep. as well, uh, you know, of adults to uh understand this this community that we have and i think it was uh, great and cheers aficionado for having you know jonas on the cover with a younger thing i think it was great for them to get out of their element too yes yeah um, i think they needed something a little fresh like that so i think that's been that's been great um you know we had g easy uh who's when it was first brought to us i, I wasn't i didn't really know just because our, our younger people that worked at our company knew exactly who he was yep and the other thing with our covers too is a lot of times we'll have just spirits people. Mm -hmm. uh, we are cigar and spirits. We're not just cigar and we're not just spirits, but we are lifestyle too. And we try and get as many cigar people as possible, but we also have the spirit side where, you know, they'll maybe have a cigar here or there, but we want to promote the spirits as well too. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll get a lot of people going, Oh, they, do they even smoke cigars? Well, we're cigar and spirits, not just cigars. Right. Right. Sure. Sure. Did you ever interview oh. George Clooney? I did a promo in my cigar club radio days with George Clooney's tequila. So I, before my repertoire here at Story Geeks, I was on Cigar Club Radio here in the in the yeah. Providence Metro. And his tequila, uh, Cosamigos, I believe it is called, right? Cosmigos. Yeah, Co Cosamigos. And we did a whole promotion with, with the radio station Sold and stuff like that. Sold for about a billion dollars, too. Right? Excuse me? Sold for about a billion dollars. Really? I should ask for more money for the promo. Is that, <laughs> <laughs> is that... <laughs> they have it. They could come up with it. Sure. Their sure, sure. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Drew, do you have a question? No, I was just going to uh, you know? ask Lincoln about the... Uh... <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, no, I was just going to uh, ask Lincoln about the... Uh about the Forbes council, you know, how, how that came about, how, you know, how, how the, that, how was that experience for him? Mm. Um, a friend of mine that's also an entrepreneur was talking about the Forbes, can, uh, the Forbes council and uh, you're talking about the Forbes council, right? Yes. Yeah. It's, it's a community of, uh, of, of entrepreneurs. And another uh, friend of mine uh, recommended, or uh, was speaking to me about it. It was part of the council. Uh, who's a, a pretty heavy hitter, hitter here in Orange County, and was speaking to me about it. He said, you should really, uh, he introduced me uh, to a few people over there at Forbes and said, you should really join this council. It's a, it's a, it's a community and some of the qualifications that you have to have a certain amount of experience and certain your businesses have to be, be doing a certain amount of money. And and uh, uh, I think it's around 10 mil or something like that. I, I don't really know off the top of my head, but um, and then you have to do a whole, you do an application, then, then they takes about a couple of weeks, they review it. And then they pick a certain amount of year that they, they, I guess they put on the council. Um, I haven't been able to get too involved yet. Uh, I'm going to be writing an article for Forbes.com uh, here pretty soon on entrepreneurship. Um, I've just been traveling, so I haven't really had an opportunity to get too ingrained in it. So I can't really say too much of, of what I'm going to be doing or how much involved I'll be able to be. But, uh, you know, it's a, it was an honor to be able to be honored by the Forbes Council to, to be part of something like that. You know, that's a big step in my career. Anytime you can get any kind of acknowledgement, uh, you know, really is a beautiful thing. Not, not that I need it anyway, but it, it does, you know, it's, uh, I've been an entrepreneur since I was 18 years old. I've never worked for another person. Uh, I don't even have a resume. So, if, you know, if Cigar and Spirits has to work, I'll, I'll probably be on the streets. But, uh, um but I've been very blessed. So, uh, you know, it's just, it's nice to get those acknowledgements and it's, it's a blessing. That's awesome. Yeah. That's no, it's awesome. cool. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I have uh, quite a few people that are uh, young, younger generation, uh, my family and uh, throughout the country, uh, you know, they attend their universities for business. And so, uh, I was last night and, you know, uh, and he was telling me that, you know, that Forbes council, you know, to be 
you know, to even be nominated or even be considered for that, it's a, a very high uh, uh, honor and uh, I, more people. I didn't think I would get it. I, I was generation. surprised when they came back when they came back and actually said, "We'd love to accept you into this." And and I I was very surprised. I I, I thought it was just kind of shooting fish in a barrel. I, I you know I, I really didn't you know I, I didn't think I was that the right way to say that. Either way, I didn't think I was going to get it. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, it was, it was <laughs> quite an honor. Uh, when they when they did when they did do that, so it was, well, that, it was pretty, pretty cool, you know. I, I'm an entrepreneur yeah, at heart. I, I love building businesses, itself. but more importantly, and you know, it's interesting as as you get older, you, you change. When you, when I was younger, you know, it was uh, it was you know you look you're chasing kind of that that money. Yeah. And as now when I'm a little older, uh, you know, I love building teams. I love working with people. I love watching. We've got this uh, uh, gal that's been working with us for nine years, uh, Brianna Wheelers, who's our event director. She's an executive in our business now where she started pretty much just packing subscriptions for us one by one when we first started the magazine and just watching her grow over the years has been way more rewarding than any dollar Maddie could put on it. She just, her growth in her personal life and her business life and her growing as a person and our, how she's grown in events and in the business. And just, it's been, that's, what's been beautiful to watch. And that's now my goal over the next, you know, 30 years is to, build more businesses, build this business and to be able to grow people and including myself more importantly, yes. I have to, I have to learn every day and I've got uh, guys, uh, you know, kicking my ass every day that are, uh, they've been around the block. So it's, I appreciate every time they do, you know, knock me down a little bit. Sure. Sure. No, that, that's good advice for the Stoya geeks listeners. You can go to cigot You can see what events that, that they're doing. Uh, any pa- uh, spirits on pairings, uh, any of the interviews that they have, uh, sign up for their social media as well. That's cigarandspirits.com. But since Lincoln is on the Story Geek Show, we are going to talk about your cigar reviews. Uh, take me through that process of, you know, okay, you're going to sit down and you're going to do a review. You're going to put it on the website. You're going to put it in the publication. You have a rating system. It seems to match some of the, the industry rating systems. We have a different rating system here on Stogie Geeks. Some people like it. Some some people don't. You know what I mean? But but take us through like, like how that develops. Like, Do you have a panel of cigar tasters? Do they get submitted? Um, how, does, how does that work for you? I like to say that we have uh, a more one of the most intricate panels in the in the industry, and and the reason being is that we have uh, we have ten people that we change out every year. Okay. Uh, we do change the panel out every year, and they have and they're required to have over a hundred years combined experience. Uh, number one with cigar smoking. Uh, there's a form that they have to fill out that we do uh, kind of put a, our own scientific process behind it based off their palates. Who, how many people do we want that want? bold, strong cigar that, you know, they like to smoke bold, strong cigars. How many like to smoke light cigars? How many like medium bodied? And we try and balance that throughout the panel. Um, then it's then, then they're there. The cigars are then sent and they're blind rated. Um, uh, there's no labels on, there's no logos. They don't know who they're rating. They don't know where they're coming from. And then they, they're judged on a hundred point panel where it's based off taste, flavor, draw, construction, all of those basic things for a cigar. Mm-hmm. You know, and then the the overall experience, and um, then we, we we put those together, and then we then publish the ratings. We try never to publish anything too low. Um, we're just not in the business to do that. Yep. We we definitely we don't want to tell people what not to buy. We'd rather tell people you know what you should have in your humidor. I think it's counterproductive to tell anyone what not to buy. Um, I think people can figure that out themselves. Um, we don't we're not in the business to hurt anyone's brand. And because, uh, you know, cigars is, is, is like a practice, whether it's law or medicine, you're always practicing. You know, I, I believe if you even talk with the, let's say the Fuentes or the Padrones, they've per- almost, you know, they've perfected the art of the cigar. But I believe that if you talk to them, they say, we're always still practicing. They're always looking for better. They're always, you know, new techniques, everything that they do in their factories. I think they've done an amazing job. And, you know, we want to make sure to promote some of the better stuff. But we have one of the most intricate panels. I mean, uh, it's 10 people over 100 years combined experience. No one editorial. No one in sales is involved in the, in the ratings. Nobody uh, that's going to, you know, be able to pick up a brown paper bag. Uh, we don't reveal who's on the panel because we don't want them being influenced by anyone. And none are directly uh, associated with any manufacturers. They're not associated with any sales reps. They're not associated with anyone that would have any kind of biased opinion. We, uh, we like to keep our panel very pure. 
uh, with what comes in. So. That's super cool. I'm looking at some of the sticks that you have reviewed. Uh, again, for you Story Geeks listeners, I am on CigarAndSpirits.com, and there is a section called Cigar Reviews. We are going to get to 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 the top of 2018 uh, within the next fi- uh, 15 minutes or so. But um, yeah, like uh, you, you got some you you got some p- p- drones. They're on everyone's list, right? The Padron 1964 anniversary, super high rating here, super high rating everywhere. Awesome stick. Um, you got the LFD Lanox. Uh, I'm a huge fan of that stick. Uh, I was telling my my LFD story uh, to the Story Geeks last week, so I will spare that uh, again. <laughs> um, so if you missed the episode, you 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 can go back. Uh, you got the my father La Beju. Uh, stands for kisses super cool stick then you got some kind of um you 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 got some kind of sticks here that are all over the place within price for example you have the jc newman brick house connecticut short torpedo right i had jc newman maduro full disclosure they're a sponsor of the show story geek show but let me tell you something that brick house line I mean, you do not have to spend a ton of money to enjoy a really good smoke. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. Right? It's like, you know. And you don't have to spend a lot of money to have a good cigar. And right? people don't get I, I get two things that drive me nuts uh, when, when guys talk to me about cigars. And I get it all the time. I was actually just one out of a, one out of a place there, and a guy asked me about cigars. He's a young kid. He goes, my friend's birthday. What should I buy? Da, da, da. I gave him the magazine. I said, look at some of these. Let, pick out three and let me know which ones you like. But you don't have to spend a ton of money to have a good cigar. That, that has nothing to do. It's much like wine. You don't. Uh, you don't. I, I, I can't stand when a guy comes. Oh, this was a fifty dollars cigar. You know, we've never heard of because someone's trying to market a, an expensive cigar that's got you know some marketing dollars. Yep. It, it doesn't necessarily expensive doesn't always mean good with cigars. Right. And and even even with Cubans, I you know the guys when I'm sitting in a lounge or talking or I speak with a guy and he goes and this one I know someone doesn't actually smokes uh, you know that really isn't involved with cigars when they go, Oh, I only smoke Cubans. I go, how do you only smoke Cubans and claim, you know, cigars, you haven't experienced all the cigars to understand cigars. I still don't even know cigars. I mean, I, I believe I know a lot. I can tell you based off my resume of, you know, over, I've been smoking for 10, 14 years now. I average two to one to three cigars a day. I think for a while I was almost up to one to seven. Sure. <laughs> but I and I think I've been to every almost every most of the factories in the industry, whether it be Cuba, Dominican Republic, Nicaragua. I just went to an Italian cigar factory, so I, I know a few things here or there. But when a guy tells me he only smokes Cuban cigars, tells me he doesn't really get he doesn't really know cigars because I would say ninety percent of the time I get a Cuban cigar out of that box, uh, you know, thirty percent of them are inconsistent with the other cigars, and. You know that, and that just tells me they're not they're not they're not experiencing and playing with their palate. And you have to try Dominican, Nicaraguan, Honduras, even Italian, uh, any of these cigars to really understand cigars and understand your palate. You can't you can't say I only smoke Cubans. I hate that comment. Yeah, sure, I mean? sure. And, and, and yeah, is sure. it that and and the person who is searching for his or her box so they can be dedicated to that brand. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so they're like, "Oh, I only smoke this. I only smoke Ashton VSG. I'm making it up or whatever." And I'm like, "Man, you're really missing out." You know what I mean? And then try the different regions, find out what you like from that region, what you don't like, and then explore that region. And that's what it's all about. But some people, you know, some people don't. They they want to search for the for the box because they're members and they want to fill their locker. And it's like it's just crazy. I have my go-to cigars that I, I smoke all the time that I, I have go-to in the humidor. There's some like my, my, my personal top favorites that I, I enjoy, but I'm also a situational smoker, meaning what did I just eat? What did yep. I just drink? Who am I sitting with? How much time do I have? Yep. All um, the yeah. factors that I play. I, I sometimes look at a cigar or I'm, I, that we, we get in and I go, I just, for whatever reason, I, I feel like having that cigar. Yep. I mean, to say I only smoke this means you don't know anything about cigars. So sure. I, I can say to people, get out there and explore a little bit, you know, yeah. and then pick the ones you enjoy. There's so many beautiful cigars out there, you know. Yeah, I'm the same way. Look, the size, how much time I have, what I'm doing. You know, we have the luxury to smoke here, uh, here at work in the studio. So sometimes, yeah. like, if it's a really good cigar, I don't want to type. 
You know what I mean? Because I'm, I mean, I'm, we work in computers, right? So I'm typing, 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 and 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 it's just like you know, I, I want to sit back and and enjoy it. Or after work, we close the computer, hang out, crack open some spirits, make some some old fashions or whichever, and spend an extra I love hour. The pair. So. Yeah, I love pairing a cigar with a spirit. You yeah. know, there's some, there's some beautiful. I like pairing with a rum. I like a scotch. That's also situational too. If I'm sitting around. I want to gain deep thought. I'll, I'll, I'll do some sco- scotch pairing. If I'm uh, kind of out and about mingling, I'll do some rum. If I feel like going just crazy that night, I'll do a little vodka. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> you know? Yep. Yep. Uh, so it, it's all situational. Yeah. You got the Sobra Mesa, right? Dumberton Tobacco, a t- total yep. rock star, in my opinion. His demeanor, uh-huh. you know. <laughs> yeah. The total like, rock star, his demeanor, yeah. just freaking things. He went on a social media rant. A couple of weeks ago about someone freaking whatever right uh you know uh drew uh the collab i'm glad you put collaboration pieces in there because yeah i made a, uh at the end of the calendar year for stogie geeks i usually do a top five or ten depending on time um one year it was ten because i had more time because i was only here for stogie geeks now that i'm here for stogie geeks and security weekly i did top five like like, like my top five brands to watch for next calendar year. You know what I mean? What I'm looking forward to seeing for IPCPR, Drew will have his list at the end of the year uh, there. I thought in 2018, we would see more collaboration pieces. Now, it's coming now this year. You know, there there are a lot more collaboration pieces, but you have the Drew Estate and Caldwell All Out Kings. That is an awesome smoke. You gave that a 90 rating. And you know something? I would probably agree with that when that came out because that's one of those sticks that really has to sit. You know what I mean? I venture yeah. to say if you put that in your – if you were able to get the ones from before when you did the interview, put that in your panel for your 2019 smokes, I bet you it would definitely get a higher rating for sure. You know? Yeah. Yeah, super yeah, you know, cool. We put, we, put the, we put sticks through the, uh, the panel multiple times all the, all the time. Yep. Um, because sometimes there's factors that come into it. Um, you know, they get shipped, you know, uh, I know some of the other publications, they'll go out and they'll buy the sticks from the from the lounges in order to rate them. Uh, we like them sent directly from the manufacturer. Some people will argue and say, well, they're sending you their best sticks. Well, we want them to send us our best their best sticks. Right. But we, don't, we, we also don't want to go to a lounge, different lounges to buy the sticks, because what could end up happening if the cigars are not taken care of properly, if they're not humidified properly, if they're if they're if. If they're being tossed around, it can mess with the construction. We don't know how those cigars were handled before they got into our hands. So it's not fair to judge someone's cigar when other people have touched it and, and, and be able to, to put it through a panel. We want to know what's the purity of what they're sending to us, or, uh, what they're sending directly to us, and we know how it's been handled in our humidors. We know how it's been handled uh, and who's touched it and who, everything that's gone on with it so that we, we know there's a construction problem. We know that a package came shipped in and it was thrown around by UPS. And we can say we got to call them and say, "Hey, you know, you got beat up in, the, in shipping, and we're not. We send us something else because we're, it's the construction is going to be bad on the leak rope, whatever it may be. Because those little details are going to make a difference in, in points when it comes to the ratings." Right. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. For sure. And, and I don't know. What, I don't know what the hell guys are doing with them at the lounge. You know, yeah, yeah, right. Ninety nine percent of them, I think, take excellent care. But you get those few couples that that aren't, or you get customers going in there and taking and put them in their pocket, rolling them around or taking them outside. You know, we don't know what happens. Yeah. Well, well, again, it also goes back to, to business model of the shop owner, right? Is it, is it a bar that by the way, you can smoke in, right? Or is it, a taba- is is the shop owner a tobacconist and really cares about the tobacco first and spirits second? It depends on their business model, you know, for sure. And that's so true too, because there's so many. There are a lot of lounges where it's, it's the bar first, and there's nothing wrong with this, by the way. But it's the bar first, and they're, they're they sell cigars, yep. and you get the tobacconists who have a bar. Yep. Um, I, my first lounge I was ever member at was, uh, ironically, uh, a aficionado cigar here in Lake Forest. I was a a, a member when. Uh, when I was, I think, 18, 19, or 21, sorry, at the time. And uh, they had a beautiful back room, but they were tobacconists first, and yep. they had a bar. And, but the bar was beautiful, and they had a private room, and it was a private membership, and I, it was just, it, it's a beautiful lounge, and, you know, they had they had, the, they had the cigars first. And they educated me for years. I'd stay up till 2 o'clock talking with the owners, Sean and Angela, talking with them about all the different cigars to smoke. And and at the time, I was doing really well, so they were, of course, they were selling me the, you know, I, I can't even tell you how much I was spending on cigars. <laughs> yeah. 
that's probably why I had to start the magazine is because I, 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 you know, I yeah. need more cigars. Yeah, <laughs> you needed more cigars, and you know, yeah. well, so they gave you a house account. I'm assuming, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. There Abs- you go. Absolutely. Yeah. I got a house account next door. It's pretty dangerous. But we yeah. were adjacent to the Havana cigar shop and, and, and uh, here in Warwick, Rhode Island. And yeah, it's it's just it's pretty dangerous because I, I walk in, you know, just grab things and, and walk out and then, you know, come next door and smoke or, or stay there. Well, I, and- I didn't know anything. They would just sell me whatever is the most expensive. I'm like, sure. <laughs> Like on a fire, Opus X. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, right, right, that's how right. old cigars are. All right. Yep. Yep. And then I'm looking at my bill every month. I go, whoa. So they gave you the brick house last, right? <laughs> I was going to have to start doing dishes in the back just to pay the bill. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ben, Ben, Ned on that, all right? Absolutely. I want to pivot uh, as we wrap up this because I've I I want to respect your time constraints and whatnot. But um, I your top eight. Um, top 18 your top 20 for eight uh for 2018 i'm assuming that you do this every year of course right uh there it's coming up in january actually We're excuse me well, our top 20 is coming up uh, in january this, yep. this year coming up yep we'll Ab- yeah um is there anything added to that mix that that makes it there or do you just collect the numbers that are on the top from from all your reviews from from the publication we collect, we collect the numbers on the top and they actually go through the panel again for the end of the year blinded it starts. It start. By the way, it starts completely. It, it goes. It goes through actually twice, and it goes through a complete uh, another process that we do for our top twenty. Okay. We don't really reveal, reveal that too much on the top twenty because uh, the only thing we get involved in is kind of a voting uh, aspect of it towards the end because a lot of them will come in with the same rating. Sure. And at that point, we then will smoke. Uh, the team will smoke uh, the cigar and say, "Okay, uh, let's vote on this." Yeah. So everything is pretty. Uh, uh, democratic when it yeah. comes to uh, what comes in the top 20 and who makes one and everything, because uh, you know, we do get ties sometimes and we have to then decide, okay, why, you know, why is this one better? And right. sometimes it could be the draw, you know, for sure. me, my biggest cigar is the draw. Yep. If I get a cigar that doesn't draw my, my head explodes. Yeah. Yeah. Construction draw for <laughs> sure. Um, is, are, are those blinded as well? The when 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 you yeah okay cool super cool. You got the Goro and Goro. do you have a question, Drew? Goro. Drew, you have a question before we jump into this? Yeah, go. Yeah, to uh, ask Lincoln about the event he's got coming up here in our area here in Texas uh, next weekend. Uh, just wanted to kind of give him a, a little bit of platform to tell us about that. You know what to expect, things of that nature for all of our Stogie Geeks listeners. If you're going to be here in the Dallas Fort Worth uh, Cigar and Spirits Magazine is going to have an event here in Fort Worth. Uh, from what I hear, it's going to be premium. And just Lincoln, tell us about that. We we've got our uh, we've got our second annual uh, Texas Cigar and Spirits Tasting. We do an event here in Newport Beach. It's probably one of the bigger ones on the West Coast. It's a little over a thousand people. We've had it for nine years. We're going our tenth year this next 2020. Uh, we'll be in June on June 6th at the Hyatt in Newport Beach. And uh, it's grown year after year. And what we've done is we've replicated that same event, and we now have taken it to Fort Worth, Texas, where uh, we've seen great success. Last year we had a little about – in our first year we had about 700 people last year. Um, uh, Macau Cigars is one of our big sponsors for that as well. They're in the Fort Worth uh, area. Um, and uh, basically you get, a, it's, you get to go around and you get to take home over $300 worth of some of the best cigars in the world, as well as sample some of the best spirits in the world over uh, some bottles or $1,000 bottles that you get the opportunity to, to sample as well. The event business is by far my favorite part of this business. And the reason being is it gets like we were kind of talking about digital. And then we talked about uh, print. The event business really gives the, everyone the opportunity to come and live the lifestyle for a night and understand what cigar and spirits is really about. The cigars, the spirits, the lifestyle, and the camaraderie that we all get to share uh, together in our industry. And in and, and, and nine years, knock on wood, we've ne- and there's a lot of spirits being sampled, and, and you get an opportunity you know, to, to feel, feel pretty good, and we're very responsible in the way we do it. And so are the people that come, and we thank them for that. But we've never had an issue. We've never had a problem. Everyone is in meeting new friends. They're making new business contacts. They're making, you know, lifelong friends. I've had people come, oh, I'm coming with a whole new group this year that I've been coming with for the last five years. You know, and that's what the events really get the opportunity to do is to create that interactive experience. And 
you know, the team we've had from the past to today have really built that. I've been very blessed to have such amazing people that work with me um, that have just built this. Brianna Wheeler's done an amazing job building these events over the years and creating that, you know, that warm experience when you come. There's no, you know, you get guys that are CEOs of Fortune 500 companies that we have here in Orange County coming all the way down to guys that are just blue collar guys, you know, and just coming to have a good time. And, you know, they don't get to do that all the time. And, and it's it's really beautiful to see everyone mingling like that. And there's no there's no colors. There's no politics. There's none of that at our events. And we have uh, contortionists, snake dancers, uh, guys on stilts, juggling cigars, juggling everything, you know, uh, <laughs> but drinking and smoking. It's, it's, it's pretty amazing. <laughs> That and that's good. in the Newport one, and we're going to start including that in Texas probably in the next couple of years with more entertainment like that. This year we've got a, a country band that's going to be playing as well. We've got barbecue food. we got, you know, uh, we want to provide just everyone a beautiful experience to share in what we love. And uh, this year for Texas, we're donating a, a big portion of the proceeds to the Cigar Rights of America. Um, you know, we're, uh, as an industry, we're tired of getting pushed around for something that is not cigarettes, something that is not marketed to kids at all. I've never gone behind, excuse my tyrant, but I've never gone behind in high school and said, hey, hey, you got that Opus X today? <laughs> you know, just that, that doesn't happen. And anyone that says, excuse my French, but anyone that say, says that's fucking happening is ignorant. Yep. yep. They're ignorant and they have their own right. political views that they're trying to accomplish and it's bullshit. Yep. Okay, what we, when we know and every cigar smoker knows in, in, in this industry and anyone that has ever smoked a cigar knows what it's about, knows the camaraderie, and everything that's put in these cigars is natural. It's from the tobacco fields, and millions of lives are affected by this. Mm -hmm. and so it's just crazy and bullshit what they're doing well, over here. And we want to donate a, a, pro, a, mo, a we're donating a, pro, a, a portion of our proceeds to the, the CRA for the Texas one. And we're oh, we're doing a golf event in November too, where every other hole you get to go have cigar spirits too. We're going to start teaming up with organizations for that as well. Right. Well, you probably know the people for Cigar Rights America and and the people who make decisions there. I think. And, and my message to them is very clear, and I've been saying this on both Cigar Club Radio since 2014, all the way up through Stogie Geek's current date. Premium cigars, they make the argument of the 18-year-old. You know, the 18-year-old doesn't go there. I totally agree with, with that argument. But what, they, what I really think the element that they're missing from a business standpoint is... Premium cigars needs to be out of OTB when it comes to government. They, they, which is other tobacco products for you to, for, for you newest. They need to have their own category like cigarettes, like vape, like like uh, premium cigars, and then from there move forward with whatever legislation that you ridiculous legislation that you want to have. I, I agree with you 110 percent. You know, but you know they're in an uphill battle. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, it's the, the and the, the thing is, and here's the thing, though, too. The CRA works very hard. Glenn Loop over there, you know, Rocky, I know, is working hard. Everyone over there is working so hard to protect this industry. And what it really is going to come down to, too, is really us guys like Stogie Geeks, Cigars and Spirits, Aficionado, Snob, whoever else it may be, that any kind of media outlet in this, to be able to be talking about it, letting the consumers know, because a lot of consumers, they're not, they're not coming, they're not joining us in this because they think, ah, they'll take care of it, it'll be fine, it's not going to happen. But it's a very real thing. And more importantly, as Americans, it's taking away our rights that we have and our freedoms that we have of choice. So we'll do what we want to do with our bodies, our lives, our mind, whatever it may be. And, and that's the bigger picture here. You take away one thing like that, they're going to start taking away everything. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They, 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 they really need to come up with whatever they're doing and, 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 and get that separate category. Because I think if you, if you fight for your separate category, like it drives me nuts, right? Like whenever someone has a chance, Rocky's been on the news, Rocky, you know, went down there. I believe uh, in 2017 here on Stogie Geeks, we did a, if we could have someone go in front of the new elected president, right? So this is when Obama administration was out. To the Trump administration was 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 coming in. Am I dates off? Oh, it's year before that, right? Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Johnny. Right, 2016. I have a one year old, so like I I lost a year somewhere, right? So so um. <laughs> Congratulations. Oh, thank you, thank you. Right. So you know, and and we did a piece here on Story Geeks. Who would we send to represent? 
to make the plea in front of the current administration. And all the different story geeks, we had a panel of four or five of us at the time that actually, you know, gave their thoughts. And we all had different different thoughts and stuff like that. And, you know, I, I, I think that, you know, they always do the plea like, you know, oh, well, you know, it's going to affect the workers and it's going to affect the workers. And, but, you know, it, some of them are sitting on some of the classic facings. You know, you're sitting on a million dollar business, right? Government doesn't want to hear that. Because they, they know what you make because they're taxing you. And you're crying poverty for the workers. They don't want to hit you got to fight to separate the category. I mean, uh, that you, you got I, I agree. I think it does need to be to, yeah. to do that. Yeah. And but as, as a consumer, as anyone that's involved with cigars, as the consumers, they need to get the, we need to get the message out. They need to know that it's real. They need to be aware of it. They got to join the CRA, the IPC, anything that, they, that is, 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 is helping to fight this fight, they need to be part of. Yep. And including any of us, we take we have a responsibility as an industry, being in our industry to protect it as well. Yep, yep, absolutely. Drew, do you have a final question? Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, I was just pretty much, uh, I just, like I said, I want to get a platform about next week's event. Uh, matter of fact, I got an email out to John Cornyn's people, staff, to see if we could attend this event with us. You know, he's our senator here in Texas, uh, and, and he's part of, uh, along with Rubio and all the others down there uh, I love for the, the uh, uh, industry. Yeah, absolutely. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, that that's the best cause of action. If, if you can get their ear, that's the way that you have to go. Because the other way is just exactly. it's, it's just kind of like pissing into the wind, in my opinion. You know what I mean? Because I've been having the same argument on when I, again, when I had the, the, the cigar show. For, I'm making the same argument, talking about this for five years. And the funny thing is, in, in October of 2014, I got to find the, 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 the audio clip when I was on radio. I was, I was interviewing one of my sponsors. It was Mike Bellity from MLB uh, Cigar Ventures. And I says, you know, by the time this FDA thing goes through, it's going to be 2020. By the time we even know what direction. I said that like six years ago. And you know something? I'm not far off. Like, like <laughs> it's probably going to be 2022. I was like, this is crazy. You know, I've been saying that all, all along. You know, I love your top 20. Um, you know, uh, your, your, your number two, uh, Don Carlos, Eye of the Shock, Super Cool. Surprise, my only comment, surprise that number 17, the Tatuaje Petite Black Lancero, Gut 17. That is a phenomenal stick. <laughs> you know, I, I have nothing to do with that. <laughs> yeah, you know, but hey, you know, what are you going to do? You can't win them all. You know, you can't win them all. Yeah, for sure. Lincoln, uh, if something comes up that you want us to post out on social media or whatever, have your PR, send Drew or myself an email, and we'll get it out on our end. Uh, please keep in touch with the show. And, and just so you know, for the top 22, we do have our uh, each issue. I think we're the only people to do this. We do our top 20 uh, larger cigars, and we do our top 20 boutique as well. Uh, we started that about three, four years ago, too. I'm actually going to talk about that in our next segment where, you know, like like the boutiques. Like, I, I love classic facings. Don't get me wrong, right? Love classic facings. Love the industry. But I love the creativity whether it be their marketing story or 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 the, the the blends that they're trying to push and and I love it and and I also like craft spirits and craft beer like like ultra small stuff waiting in big lines with all those hipsters and all that stuff and you know <laughs> you know uh go, going out to the breweries or the vineyards and 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 I love the small stuff cuz you can really find some really hidden gems Obviously in the cigar, but definitely within the spirits realm as well. Yeah. You know, 100%. for sure. Well, Lincoln, thank you for appearing on Story Geeks. Thank you for your time. Uh, Guys, thank you so much for having me. It's been such a, it's been, uh, it's been a great time. I really appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you. You take care. You too. Yep. Story Geeks, when we come back, Drew and I are going to talk sticks of the week. We'll be taking a quick break. <laughs> 